Hey everybody, good news everyone. We're back for lesson three of our Cambridge Nationals Creative Eye Media R082 Creative Digital Graphics Unit. So far we've been working on L02 and in today's video I will complete all of the necessary tasks for that learning objective to be completed. We've got lots of little things to get done today, including one important section where, from my experience, many students struggle. And it's not because it's the most difficult part of the course. It's actually relatively simple and easy, but many students struggle to understand what's actually required. There is an element here where you're in danger of committing plagiarism. Now, plagiarism is where you copy work from the internet or other sources without attributing it to the source and passing off as your own work. Many students don't do this deliberately. They do this because they think that's what you're being asked to do. I'm going to show you where that is and how to avoid that in your coursework. So for lesson three, we're going to be completing this task and ticking off all of our remaining sections of this work here. So learning objectives, by the end of this video, you can be able to, be able to create a work plan. We're going to understand potential legal issues of our digital graphic and we're going to create an asset and resources table. Now, as you can see here, we've already done quite a lot of this. We've done the client requirements. We've done the target audience. We've looked at the visual style and composition. And in order to do that, we've produced a mood board and a visualization diagram. We've also completed a mind map when we looked at our target audience uh, way back in our first lesson. So we're taking off this section here where we're going to look at the different activities and describe the assets and resources needed to create our graphic. And we're gonna look at the legal restrictions. So, first task, scenario, just reminding ourselves what this is all about. Your client has asked you to create a cover for a new film called Daring to Dream, England's story at the World Cup. It's about the England women's football team and their journey in the recent World Cup. A certificate you will be issued for this Blu-ray cover, which must be a single piece of artwork of this particular height and width. The important thing to bear in mind in this one, and although it's been mentioned in passing, we really are going to focus on it today. This is a commercial product. This is not schoolwork. You are employed by this company to produce the design for the graphic. Now you cannot use the defense of, I'm a student, so therefore I'm allowed to take things from the internet. Because although you are allowed to take things from the internet as a student, you're working as an employee of this media company. And as such, you are not. We're gonna cover what that means and how you get past that in a moment. We we'll start off with that work plan. And for that, I'm gonna switch over to my browser so you can see a little bit about what it is we're producing. When we see the word work plan, you may want to Google search it and you're gonna see something that looks a little bit like this. Producing a series of tasks or goals where you then talk me through each step, give me how long it would take to complete each one, expected outcomes, comments, that sort of thing. Now that is a perfectly appropriate way to complete this. You may wish to do something very similar to this. Creating a document like this is actually is just a Word document where you create a new farm, create a table, make a list, and you're gonna find many examples on the internet of the sorts of things that you can do to make this work. Now, as I click through some of these on the screen right now, some of you are gonna notice that I've not yet clicked on images like this one here. Now, these images here are of work plans, but they're on a very specific specialist type of work plan that we call a Gantt chart. Now, a Gantt chart looks like this, and as I see I've searched for it here, you're seeing a lot more examples of what a Gantt chart is. Well, a Gantt chart is the same list of tasks that you would have in a work plan. Show me where the work plan is. Oh, a work plan. But along the top, we have periods of time, the amount of time it would take to complete the task, and then we colour in the set of boxes. So, Task 1.1 on this example may take four days to complete. It's colored in four times. This one here is colored in for another few series of days, but importantly, it doesn't overlap with this first task. That means that this task here is dependent on the first one. If we don't understand what that means, then that's okay. Dependency in this case means that I can't complete this until I've done that. 
okay you might want to think about it in terms of something else and your teacher in your learning lessons may have given you examples for instance it'd be very difficult for me to wash up the saucepans and the plates from my dinner before I've used them to actually eat my food in fact it makes much more sense to wash the plates after I've used them in this task here making the dinner then eating the dinner and then washing up afterwards are three individual tasks that are dependent on the other one already being completed I can't eat my food until it is cooked and I can't wash up the messy plates until I have eaten the food off of them now that's not the case for every task there are some things that can be done at the same time as each other in much the same way as that while cooking some rice which may take some minutes to, to cook I can at the same time boil a kettle to make a hot drink now that is not dependent on the other one I can't I don't have to wait for rice to be cooked before I can use my kettle so all those tasks can be done at the same time and on this example here you're seeing some tasks which occupy the same time span that means they can be done at the same time you can do multiple tasks at the same time in the time it would take me to cook some rice I could put the kettle on I could put some coffee in a cup I could check to see uh, if the tables are all complete and ready uh, and to get some nice little forks out of a drawer all of these activities are not dependent on each other and would take the same time span to complete in your project you would need to think about the sorts of tasks it's something that many students find tricky to achieve because well what tasks do I need to do you need to identify what activities must be completed to create the digital graphic now, I've marked many creative my media products um, over the year, years that I've been teaching it and the amount of times that I see Gantt charts and work plans that have for instance LO1 work and LO2 work added into the Gantt chart well none of that is the creation of the digital graphic that's the research and the planning of it the creation of it is actually making in this case the Photoshop file once we understand that what we're looking for is just a creation we can really narrow it down to what tasks are I'm not going to go into much detail about what they are because I don't want to complete your coursework for you but what I will say is if we are creating the digital graphic there are a series of tasks that will need to be completed some of which will be very very obvious for instance at the bare minimum I may need to find my images I might need to save them I might want to do some edits what sort of edits well that's going to depend on the sorts of images that I've got how many I've got what the images are what I want to do with them I could find an image of a footballer but if that footballer is on the background of a football pitch then why would I bother to cut them out unless I need to cut them out for some reason if I found an image of a single football maybe I might want to cut that out or the logo of the World Cup that is an image that may need to be cut out of its background does that sound like a task well it sounds like a task to me and if it sounds like a task it's something that can be completed and added here once you've worked out what tasks you will need to produce you'll simply need to list them down here along the top of your Gantt chart if you choose to do a Gantt chart you're welcome to do a work plan you would have the period of time now it is 10 hours to complete this task in full which means that if I see random numbers up here one of the first things I'm going to be asking is well what is the what is the time span 1 to 24 here is that days 24 days well if it was days then I'm going to say that potentially you're not meeting the requirements of this assignment which is to complete this task in approximately 10 hours so if it isn't days or well, what could it be instead could it be hours could it be lessons could it be half hours 
half hours, 24 half hours, 12 hours. Well, that seems like a relatively decent time span for me. Now, in terms of time spans, that's going to depend on your tasks. Some tasks are not going to take half an hour to complete. Cutting out a football from a background is something that should be easy enough to achieve in half an hour. In fact, I would say that in half an hour, you might be able to cut out three things from their background. If I then want to start moving them around the page, well, that might take an hour or so, who knows? And I might even start doing that while I'm doing the other bits. Maybe after that, I'm going to add some text, but the text is going to go over the top. So maybe I need to wait until that's completed. Maybe it's going to take an hour and a half to do that. That might seem extreme, but I really want to play with the filters and the editing, and I want to change the colors, and I'm going to add some extra stuff to it. As long as I'm justifying my reasons every single time, you can make this look how you want it to look. As a general rule, you want it to kind of look like a staircase. Not necessarily half an hour each time, but you'll want the path to go down. Okay, and where we've got several things happening at once, well, that's okay as long as the general consensus is that these activities move at a downward slope. Remember, make your tasks clear. I personally would break them down to the smallest criteria that you possibly could, but always make sure we're talking about the creation of the digital graphic. I would look at your time spans and make sure they're appropriate for the course, for what you're being asked to do. An employer is not going to let you spend 24 days completing a task which they would expect done in 10 hours. You will be sacked. I would say that if this document here feels confusing to you or feels like it would be difficult to complete, well, go for the work plan. It's a simpler way of doing things, and some people may even prefer to start with a work plan and then turning it into a Gantt chart as they move on. Once you've completed your work plans, we're ready to move on to the next section, looking at our legal issues. The legal issues is the section which is going to give you the most difficulty for plagiarism. Marking this previously for my uh, with other classes, I found that there's a potential issue of plagiarism when people copy the same work plans. Your work plans are going to look very similar to each other, but you will all have approached it in this very different way. And it's okay if they look slightly different, it's your task. But the legal issues is going to be something where some of you are instantly going to want to do this. Google, click, copyright law, Wikipedia, and job done. Okay, now that is for some of you, the most of your research. But I've instantly failed. I've instantly failed because the first thing I clicked on was copyright law in the United States. We do not live in the United States of America. But secondly, Wikipedia is a frenemy. It gives you all this information. Fantastic. Many, many experts have worked together to create this incredible document. And it is the first place that I look when I'm looking for something new to learn. But this is not my work, and I would never pass it off as my work. I am not an expert in this, and your employer doesn't care. The important thing when we look at copyright law, in this particular one here, or legislation or anything in the creative media, is how does it apply to your task? Well, copyright law in this task is that we're creating a digital graphic. That digital graphic is going to have various different images in it. If I scroll back up slightly to look at this Photoshop file that I showed you way back in lesson one, I've got lots of different images, people that have been uh, that are in this. I've got this use certificate that are going to be subject to copyright. Now, potentially, I could get myself into a lot of trouble for using these images, and that's because of the way copyright law works. I'm not going to teach you copyright law. That's your teacher's task, and should have been done previously. But what I will state is this, is that copyright law protects people from having their image or their work stolen. All of the images that you saw came from Google. 
that's what I search I'm going to use. And many of these images, in fact, most of them, all of them, are owned by someone. If I were to click on this image here, for instance, top one, then this is owned, or at least it's on the FIFA.com website. That means two things. One, FIFA either took that image and it's theirs, or they paid someone to take that image and they now have the right to put it on the, uh, their work. That doesn't mean you have that right. In a commercial context, which is massively important for our project today, looking back here, we need to talk about the graphic we use in a commercial context, explain any illegal issues and restrictions. In a commercial context, it would be against the rules for me to use this in a cover for my business. You can use it in school. As a student, you're not subject to copyright law, but this is not a student. You are an employee of a media company. You cannot use this in a commercial product. If I were to use it in a commercial product, there is a high chance that I would be sued, taken to court, potentially having uh, to pay massive fines. Okay, that is the long short of this. Now, does that mean that I can't use any of those images in my work here? Um, well, no, at the moment it's fine, because this is not a final product. I'm a designer creating an example of what this might look like. It is up to my artist to recreate this. And if I'm being employed to create this, I would assume that my employer would give me suitable images that would be free of copyright, or they own the copyright too, so that I could use them. But it's important to make that really clear to my employer. As a designer, this is what I want to make, this is what I want it to look like. As my employer, I now tell you that you now need to make sure the images that you provide to me are copyright free or you own the rights to them. So what do I mean by the words copyright free? Many of you may be familiar with this term, especially if you've done this sort of thing in computer science or something like that. Copyright free or creative commons means that some images are taken or made by people and are put on the internet or other places for you to use. Now, there are certain limitations, calling a sharing or use or remixing your work, but for the most part it boils down to this, and Google helps. On Google I can go to tools, I can go to usage rights, and I can filter my different images. So I've got here non-commercial reuse, which means I can use this, but not in a commercial sector. So if I was doing a free to access website and I just wanted to host the image to demonstrate something, I could potentially use it in. With modification, I could photo edit it and use it for non-commercial use. I can reuse the exact same image, but not change it. Or I can reuse it and modify it. Now for our product, I'm definitely going to be modifying it. So I'm going to change the filter. And all the images disappeared. Well, all the good ones anyway. Most of the images you're going to find on Google are subject to copyright. Tools, usage. And that means that they're not available to you. In fact, most of the images that you're going to find here are from file sharing websites or Wikipedia, where someone has taken this photo, put it on their own page and said, if you can want, you can use this, yes, fine, that's okay. Um, there are some limitations, they could change their mind. It's always best practice to contact them. The example don't want you to contact random people to ask them if you can use their images. They want you to write a Word document explaining that you understand that that's what you would do in a commercial context. My cat has just decided to walk on camera. Now, for this particular task, you're going to need to make sure that you have all of that work completed, you have made that Word document happen, you have shown that you understand the differences between all of that. Once you've completed your copyright protection, I will have to knock this cat in a moment, then the next task for you is to create an assets table. And an assets table looks a little bit like this, okay? So the assets table is provided by OCR. If you don't know how to access this, your teacher definitely knows how to do it, but you will find it on the OCR website. So if I go on here and just search for OCR Creative Media, 
then I will be able to find their website. I will be able to go to their assessment sections and in their assessment section, there will be a templates folder um, somewhere. There is templates. And in that templates folder is this Word document. That allows us to have assets that we're going to use in our work. In terms of assets, what we're looking for is the sorts of images that you think about that you might want to use in your product. So let's say that I want to use this image. It's a fantastic image there. Yeah. I'm going to copy that image. Or, in fact, probably I'd best save the image because I don't want to lose it. But I'll copy it for the moment and I'll paste it in to that folder there. It will probably be quite large on my screen, so I'm going to need to resize this down. I'm going to look at their properties, the source, the legal issues and the use. So what are the properties? Well, Google is your friend. If I roll my mouse over there, I will see the sizes of the images. Now, it's not the only properties that you want to do, but it's going to be a great start for you to include this in your image. OK, I can look at I can if I save it, I can go to the file property to see a lot more. But I can definitely see a size there. Four, one, eight, four. So four, one, eight, four. This is the size of it in pixels by two, seven, eight, nine. OK, by two, seven, eight, nine. The source of it is the website it came from. It's not Google. This image did not come from Google. You found it on Google, but it came from Wikimedia Commons. Okay, now I could copy that. I could copy the, the link to it if I prefer. Um, I'll copy link address. So I'll just do that for the moment to see if it does that. Sometimes it puts Google on it. It did, so we can't do it on that one. So on this particular image here, I'm going to need to click through. Uh, I can select this take the entire URL. Again, I could just write Wikipedia Commons or Wikimedia Commons. It would be perfectly appropriate to do that, but that is perfectly fine as well for the moment. Um, just going to add the rulers onto there so I can knock that table across. There we go. Legal issues. So this image here was available without much licenses. And you can see there, you are free to share a remix. So this is under Creative Commons, okay? So this file is licensed under Creative Commons license. In fact, it's actually listed there so that we can actually nice and copy and paste that straight in. I could, actually, that's a nicer way of doing it. I'm gonna take that section there. So this is under Creative Commons. I could rephrase this better as well. There we go. Oh, it's gone all sorts of places. Um, There you go, Creative Commons license, that will do for now. Make this better yourselves. Uh, so use, where am I going to use this product? So I'm going to be using this as my hero image on front cover. So this is what I'm using it for, okay? It's not the only thing that I'd want to have. So maybe I want to have a picture of the actual World Cup. Well, I'm not finding it there at all. It's not there. So in that particular case, I may have to change this license and that's the image that I that I want to have. Okay, this was the picture of the World Cup. It's on Wikipedia still. So that is the image itself. I can find all about that particular image, more details. So you can see here, look, this is a uh, low resolution image because it is protected by copyright, which means that I could not use this image in my work without paying the owners of it some funds or to get their permission. So it's protected by copyright. I'm going to just take that straight there. I'm going to put that there. So I've added the link in for this graphic and I've mentioned that it's subject to copyright. Now this does mean that I can use the image in my iMedia coursework by all means, um, so long as I have here stated that it is subject to copyright. Maybe what I might try and do here, especially for top marks at least anyway, is try and find out who the actual copyright owner of this graphic is. It should be listed on the Wikipedia site for where I found this page or, or whatever website you found. You may find that all images rights reserved to such and such or whoever the photographer was. Uh, so I can still use this graphic, um, but in commercial context, um, I would have to state that this doesn't belong to me. Um, it's not my job as a designer to um, email the people to find out where this graphic comes from or who owns it. That's my employer's job to source 
the permissions for it, I'm just identifying to my employer that this graphic is subject to copyright. Uh, so once I've completed all of my assets here, all the different graphics that, that need to be produced, then realistically I've completed most of the tasks now. Um, if I go back onto, onto this first section here, I've now done for LO2 the client requirements, the target audience, visual style, composition, I've done the work plan, I've done this visualization diagram, I've done the legal restrictions now that I've written up those potential copyright instructions and what that means. Um, I've done the assets. The last and final task for LO2 is resources. Now resources is something that uh, some people find uh, difficult. Uh, it's not that the task itself is particularly difficult. It's the, more the fact that, um, so I can move that over so you can see it easier perhaps, that for the resources section, what we really need to do is start to list the things that we need to create our project. Um, at its basic core, we're going to need some hardware, whether it's a PC or Mac or laptop of some sort, with the mouse and keyboard, potentially a digital camera if you wish to go and take your own photos, maybe a webcam if you're going to take a, a shot of your own face to, to stick on the graphic somewhere, probably going to need the internet, probably going to need various pieces of software in order to, to create create uh, the documentation and everything else around it. A simple list here, mark band one, very basic. You can add it to the bottom of your uh, Gantt chart, your work plans, or your asset tables, or a separate word document if you prefer. Um, mark band three, justify why for all of these things. Um, that doesn't mean necessarily for each bit. I wouldn't really expect anyone or you to justify to me why you might need a mouse. Um, I'm going to take it as given that, that that's an essential part of using a computer. Um, but what I would want to see is sort of like-minded things grouped together, so that way you can then uh, justify particular sorts of hardware. So to help us out here, uh, one thing that I would definitely do at this point is find some of the software that we're going to use, like Photoshop, I would find minimum requirements. I'm not going to just copy and paste it in. It's useless and it's pointless and I don't really care. What I would suggest it is that I would find something like this to say, well, I need this sort of computer skill. Okay, well, I'm going to add that here, a PC, mouse, keyboard. I'm going to group them all together. I will have one box that has all the information there that I will need to have this spec of machine in order to be able to run Photoshop, which is important. So why do I need Photoshop? Well, I need Photoshop because it's a professional level piece of software. It's gonna allow me to do a lot of the effects that I would normally not be able to achieve on something like Paint. Um, it's the sort of software that someone employing a designer would expect them to be using. Um, of course, it's not just Photoshop that we can use, we can use any of those more complex tools, some of which I'm going to be showing you in our next series of lessons in LO3. Um, but whichever software you choose to use, um, just as long as you justify that reason, you're going to be fine. Um, so make sure that you've uh, given us a good level of, uh, of explanation for each of those tasks. And then as soon as we move on to this bit here, we're, we're near the end. We've got our client requirements, we've got the target audience, we've got the visual style, we've got a mood board, we've got a mind map, we've got a Gantt chart or a work plan, we've now got an assets table, a resources table, legal issues where we are talking about uh, the copyright, justifying it, writing up there, um, and making sure we've got a clear understanding. So for my students, I would like you to make sure that this is all complete. Um, LO2 should be done by the uh, time you watch the next video. I want all of this work submitted and uploaded to share my homework. Uh, for everyone else on the internet, uh, please talk to your member of staff, your teacher, who will hopefully tell you where they would like their work submitted. Um, thank you very much and goodbye.